Here's how it all began. Once upon a time, at the start of all stories, beginning the war of all wars, there was a wedding, the largest wedding ever seen. Everyone was there, almost. The bride is Thetis, a sea nymph. That's the kind of world we're in at the start of all stories. A world of sea nymphs and jealous gods, tricks, treats, prophecies and promises. So it's entirely normal we're at the wedding of a sea nymph. Let's waste no more time discussing it. But what does a sea nymph look like? Use your imagination. Every last drop of her is water. You can see her heart pounding, her vertebrae twisting, her teeth grinding, all under a glittering waterfall of skin. As she sighs, she splashes. She is a liquid kind of beautiful. And Zeus, the god of gods, loves her, thinks he owns her, thinks he owns them all. But Zeus is not the bridegroom today. An ordinary man is the bridegroom today. Peleus. Peleus is one lucky mortal. Peleus doesn't know what hit him. Look at his face. He knows he's a lucky mortal. And are those tears of joy from his bride, Thetis? No, but never mind. Everyone is celebrating. It is a happy day. Even Zeus, whose love is marrying another, is smiling. Why? Because Zeus has escaped his own downfall. The most powerful of gods has overridden fate and cheated his own destruction. How? Zeus was whispered a secret. A secret that had been kept for 30,000 years. Prometheus's secret. I know how you will fall. To learn the secret, Zeus released Prometheus from his 30,000-year-old chains. The earth shook as they fell. You must leave the sea nymph alone. If you father her son, that boy will be your downfall. Zeus, who had killed his own father, who had killed his own father, was all too familiar with this tale. He must cast the sea nymph off. She must be forced on another, on a mortal, on Peleus, who, as we know, was delighted. Spurned, Thetis was furious. To escape Peleus's embrace, she dripped and slipped through his arms and pulled at his feet, stagnant. But Zeus ignored this protest. If you marry Peleus, I will throw you the largest wedding ever seen. All of Olympus will be there, Apollo will play the lyre, the muses will sing, everyone will celebrate your happy day. You will marry Peleus. Zeus's word was final. Thetis was sold to a mortal. And true to his word, Zeus invited all of the gods, everyone, except one, his daughter, one of his many daughters, Eris, the goddess of strife. Because who wants strife at a wedding? She's only a little thing, wouldn't hurt a fly. The goddess of strife is a lonely woman who looks more like a child, withered by bitterness, shrunken by hate. She is forced to roam the world without comfort. No one calls her friend. She has walked for days, hungry for happiness, sick for merriment. She has walked for days to this wedding, and behind her, what shapes are behind her, stalking her, plaguing her, her children? Toil, famine, pain, battle, murder, quarrel, ruin, a merry bunch, these dwarfish toddlers of sorrow. Her belly is bloated with slaughter, her breast is pinched by lies. This daughter of Zeus, this heiress, this strife, no one calls her friend. Lights of joy shine down from Mount Belaean. Notes of pleasure leak.
peek up into the night sky. If Eris was welcome to smile at the celebration, she would, but Zeus didn't invite her. That said, the gates are open, the guards are dancing, so Eris joins the party. A pluck of discord, a twang of uncertainty, the music halts, Zeus roars to his feet. Out! Out! You're not loved here, daughter. You're hated here, daughter. Out! Is that spit? A scratch, a crack to her shin, a scream in her ear. Strife's children are kicked back into the cold. Strife's hair is dragged back into the shadows. But before such cruelty overpowers, Eris can see. One look at the bride's face. Strife was already here. A melee of middling gods crush her out. Wait! My wedding gift? It's not for the blessed bride. It's a little something for one of you. A glint, a hint of gold. Greed halts hate. And Eris hurls her contribution over the crowd. Ringed fingers, braceleted arms, green eyes sweep up to see, to catch and snatch. It thunders into the floor. No bounce, no roll. Eris's gift lands at three pairs of enameled feet. Hera, Athena, Aphrodite. Eris's mother, Eris's sister, Eris's aunt. What is this G-jaw? A trinket, a toy, a trifle for someone, given by a no one. For one of them, it's a, is it? I want it. A golden apple, and etched on the orb, a note of praise, a nod of honour, a shitster. T. Calisti, it reads. For the fairest. Who is it for? Who is this golden, delicious device of insulting prophetic apple for? The crush of gods vibrates with displeasure, with uncertainty. Call her back, drag her back, it's imperative. We must know who is the fairest of them all. But strife has been heaved from the party, thrown into the dark, limping into nothing. She can't answer. Is she smiling? as she returns to the horrors of the world. Is she smiling? She's gone. Strife's gone. She's left us unsatisfied. We're now all left to ask ourselves this question for the rest of forever, distorted by the distraction of who is the fairest. Unless... Zeus must resolve this. The god of gods, the bloke in charge. He must decide. His consort, his favourite daughter, or his aunt? Which of them keeps the golden apple? The god of gods is wise. He knows these women are more powerful than he, so like all those in power when in a pickle, Zeus passes the buck. Bring me the cowherd. Bring me the cowherd from Mount Ida. Who? Why? This is disgusting. The cowherd will decide. A silence. Too long. A shuffle, a cough from the back. From the behind of the back. Where the mortals were penned in for the happy day. A smelly armpit opens. A rough hand lifts. That's me. Hello. My congratulations to the happy couple. Tuts skip across the hall. This is disgusting. Scented gods sweep aside as the cowherd shuffles through the crowds. Zeus's nose wrinkles at the stench. You claimed to own the finest bull in all the land. Is this true? It was. Zeus's eyes water at the whiff. Until my son, Ares, appeared to you as a prize-winning bull, and then you proclaimed this new creature to be finer, and your bull to be nothing in comparison. Is this true? It is. Zeus gags. You are the fairest of judges, so you will be judge of the fairest. Hera, Athena, or Aphrodite, the goddess of marriage, 
The goddess of wisdom, courage, inspiration, civilization, justice, mathematics, strength, strategy, arts. Or the goddess of love. All three face the cow herd. You might think they might smile. They don't. You might think they might flirt. They don't. They have no need to toy with this child. They are goddesses of Olympus. Between them, they control pretty much everything. They appear to have forgotten this, thanks to Strife's little game. Competition rules. Everyone is watching. Everyone is wondering, who is the fairest of them all? Their shared bloodline boils. With needle prick precision, Strife has pierced their arterial streak of pride. Balance is lost. A collective breath is held throughout the hall for fear of the chaos around the corner. Settle it, cowherd. Settle it now and for good and keep the peace. Three carved faces wordlessly command. Pick me, you smelly man. The cowherd is dazzled by them all, in awe of them all. He sees the golden apple at their feet. They lean back as he leans in to pick it up. For the fairest, which of you should I pick? Hera lifts her chin. I can offer you power over men and nations if you pick me, cowherd. Athena holds his gaze. I can offer you wisdom and skill in battle if you pick me, cowherd. Such choices, such riches. Aphrodite softens her mouth. I can offer you the love of the most beautiful woman in the world if you pick me, cowherd. The cowherd decides. Aphrodite is the fairest of them all. The hall explodes into cheers and music and joy. A happy day indeed. Aphrodite blinks. She smiles. A painting of pleasure. Hera and Athena, statues, shocked into marble stillness. The cowherd grins, steps forward, hands the golden apple to Aphrodite. My lady, you are the fairest. My sincere thanks. You have granted me yourself. You are too quick, cowherd. I am not in the world. I am far above it. I have offered you the love of a mortal. Her face inspires all men. Her body drives them wild. You will love each other passionately, jealously. Her name is Helen. Her husband Menelaus will not thank you for stopping by. Aphrodite glides back towards the gods, the golden apple heavy in her ornamented palm. And the wedding music roars. A little shove, a muffled insult. The cowherd is not welcome amongst immortals. He should know his place. Back among the mortals, the swine herds, the goat herds, the ox herds, the shepherds. You were brave. Well done you. We knew you were destined for great things. He shrugs. He plans a journey to Sparta to secure the woman that he already adores. He'll need maps and ships and weapons and lies. Our love will set the world on fire. Another secret is to be shared before this happy feast dies. That was a mistake, husband. Hera hisses in Zeus's ear. It has begun. Eris, strife has had her way. It will all unravel from here. Why didn't you ask the cowherd's name? Zeus, the almighty, the god of gods, looks blankly at his wife. That was Paris, son of Priam, who was foretold to bring about the fall of Troy. It was left to die on a hillside as a baby. The baby did not die. The baby, that cowherd, this Paris. 
Thanks to Aphrodite's stolen gift of love, Troy will yet fall at his hands. Paris will steal this Helen away. One nation will rise up against the other. Journeys will be undertaken. Lives will be lost. Stories will be written. Man against woman against man. A discord that will last forever. You have started something here, husband. What's that? There's an unfamiliar feeling in Zeus's gut. A knotty twist. A twisting knot. Is this what mortals feel? Doubt. Up and down. Up and down out of the corner of his eye. Zeus cannot stop staring at the golden apple being tossed. Up and down by smiling Aphrodite. The fair Aphrodite. The fairest. She drops it. It crushes her toe. With disdain, she kicks away her hated toy. It swerves and curves its way through the souls of the gods and jolts to a stop by the heel of Thetis the bride. The bride will become a mother. The mother who will try and fail to make her son immortal. The son who will be the greatest warrior of all time, but a warrior with an Achilles heel. A weak spot of death that will be punctured by Paris. Remember, the cowherd at the back of the party. Still to come, fathers will sacrifice daughters, wooden horses will burst open, warriors will fight and fall, women will widow and wail. But enough of that for now. The cowherd doesn't know any of this yet. The bride doesn't know any of this yet. We don't know any of this yet. At the moment, the wind is still blowing, so enough of that for now. This golden apple of discord has only just started the rod. The scene of bride wetly lifts the cold globe by her heel. Curious. She bites down. Teeth jar into gold. They make no mark. This apple is bitter. Over the heads, the laughter, the music, Zeus stares at her. Thetis knows too well the sting of his eyes. She looks up to see her lover, who sold her to a nothing of a man. How she hates him now. As the wedding music rumbles into the long night, were you wondering? Did you guess? Thetis wasn't going to let this injustice pass without fuss. She was never a nymph for sale. Thetis invited me. It wasn't a mistake. She is glad strife came to the party.